Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel. Before we get started, we wanted to remind you that all proceeds from our channel are donated to charity. Please help us help others by giving us a thumbs up, commenting, or subscribing to our channel. Your support makes a difference. We had the honor of going on safari with Trip With a Purpose, otherwise known as TWP, a travel company by Mike and Lauren Slattery, where we were able to meet veterinarian Dr. William, or Will, Folds. He is known for his work in awareness and education of the rhino poaching crisis. Trip With a Purpose has a unique relationship with Will and the private game reserves in the Eastern Cape of South Africa. Because of this, we not only experienced a traditional safari, including game drives, but we were able to participate in large animal procedures alongside Will and TWP. These procedures included the relocation of two giraffes, three Cape Buffalo, two Impala, two Black Impala, and the examination and changing of tracking collars on one white rhinoceros and one black rhinoceros. We interviewed Dr. Folds after one of the rhino procedures and were able to hear insight into his contribution to the conservation of not only wildlife, but the surrounding landscapes of the Eastern Cape, which are intertwined more than you realize. Just like many South Africans dedicated to land conservation, Will's family has lived in the Eastern Cape area since the 19th century. We were fortunate enough to stay at his property, Luenbosch, located on the Amakala Private Game Reserve, where Prince Harry stayed in 2016. He is a fifth generation owner and his family has resided on this property since their arrival in the 1800s. My personal history goes back five generations. Um, we've been on the property from the days of wagon builders through domestic farmers, and then now we've sort of turned full circle back to wildlife and rewilding is at the heart of what we do now. His goal is to repurpose the land that has been primarily farmland for many generations and restore it to its natural state that supports the ecosystem biodiversity, which obviously includes wildlife. Um, it's entirely driven financially by tourism, but uh, we have been replacing and restoring the ecosystems and the animals that were outcompeted here by families like my own um, over the last four or five generations. And it's been an incredible journey, um, something that we could not have done without the support of people like yourselves and, and other tourists over the decades that have come here not only to enjoy our magnificent biodiversity and wildlife, but occasionally, like you, to come and get stuck in behind the scenes and, and join us on those procedures. As a veterinarian with roots deeply seated in wildlife conservation and education, Will gets to work with these unique and often endangered creatures every day. Now, you may have noticed that I called Will Doctor, so you are a veterinarian, correct? I am. Uh, I specialize, well, I only do wildlife, let's call it that. Um, I'm not a wildlife specialist per se, because there isn't a degree that we can do to become wildlife specialists. It's, it's on-the-job training. Mm -hmm. um, but I have the pleasure of working with an incredible array of biodiversity uh, using some veterinary skills and, and some common sense. But obviously we were thrilled to be alongside his team to participate in the large animal relocations and procedures. Every single one was different and a unique opportunity because this is not your typical safari. Let's take some time to show you what we did. The relocation of giraffes is not a simple process. Dr. Folds works with a large team and when working with giraffe, this became obvious rather quickly how important that team is. Finding the giraffes is not as easy as it sounds. They move around and are often located in thick brush where it isn't easy to work on a giraffe that eventually will be laying on their side. Taking care of a giraffe was fascinating because they have an unusual physiology due to their long neck. Time is crucial and the team moves quickly once the hands-on care begins. Giraffes have very strong necks and the team helps to keep its neck down and in a safe position while it is under anesthesia. Also, we had to avoid being on the side of their feet. Think about it, they can kill a lion with their kick, so we had to be careful to avoid their legs. 
you may notice that the giraffes have earmuffs and a blindfold applied. This is to protect them. They have very strong senses of hearing and sight. Doing this actually keeps them calm. The giraffe gets awakened and guided into a trailer to take them to their new home. One successful procedure done. Next, while relocating Impala, we were shocked to see the delivery of the animals to Will's team via a helicopter. Will and the helicopter pilot spotted the Impala to be relocated from the air, sedated them with a dart, retrieved them, and flew them back to the team. The Impala, we had to fly in by helicopter because they were long distances and across rivers to, mm -hmm. to get them back to where you guys were. Imagine how shocked we were when we saw the animal in Will's lap, which really worked pretty well. Part of the team supports the Impala's head, while the rest of the team, including us, examines these beautiful animals and gives any necessary treatments. The Cape Buffalo are huge, and they are extremely dangerous animals. They are considered one of Africa's big five species. Um, the buffalo, we were actually moving some very old ones out of their herd into what we call a granny camp, mm -hmm. like a retirement village for buffalo. Wonderful. Um, they've been you know, stalwarts of a breeding program that goes back 20 years, so great to be able to give them a, a, sp a space for retirement. And perhaps the most unmistakable feature of these buffalo are its majestic set of horns. They can weigh up to two tons, and we got to relocate two females and a calf. On to the rhinoceros procedures, and again, we were honored to participate in these. South Africa is home to the world's largest rhino population, but every year, these rhinos become more and more at risk of harm or death from illegal poaching. We learned early on during our game drives that there are white and black rhinoceros. Each has very different habitats and levels of aggression. The white rhinoceros, which are the larger of the two types of rhinos, and graze in more wide open fields was exciting to find. During this procedure, we were able to watch Will sedate the rhino from our vehicle. Then the team goes into motion, a model of efficiency. Once the examination, provision of medical care, and replacement of the tagging collar are done, we woke up the rhino, and this is a sight to see. Over our time on safari, we realized what a big team is required for these procedures. We asked Will about his team. Absolutely. As you've seen, you know, when we work with especially the bigger species, we've done giraffe, we've done white rhino, we've done uh, black rhino with you. Uh, we need 20, 30, sometimes 40 people at a mm -hmm. procedure. Lots of moving parts. There's uh, helicopters and lots of equipment and ropes and coordination amongst different elements of the team. Uh, leading up to the procedure, they're planning with ecologists and game managers that we have to work through. There's a legal element to permits and um, and all sorts of science behind that. So, yeah, the veterinary component is tiny. Um, we kind of do the dotting the I's and crossing the T's, mm -hmm. but it's it's uh, a very big collaborative effort, and uh, it's just amazing to be part of such an awesome team. Yeah, and the final procedure demonstrates how important the field team is for the animals and the team's safety. This was probably the most interesting of the procedures we participated in, working on a black rhino. This type of rhino generally lives in a thick brush full of thorns. The team goes out to search for the rhino, which can be challenging, even if you know where the rhino likely are. Helicopters were used to locate and sedate the rhino because black rhinos are much more aggressive than white rhinos. After waiting for a little while during the search, the action starts. The rhino unfortunately ran into thick brush, which required urgent access and assessment. The ground team went into action, clearing a path with multiple chainsaws around the sedated rhino while ensuring its safety. Oh. 
This allowed the rest of the team, including us, to conduct the necessary examination and care, as well as replace its tracking collar. The rhino was rolled frequently to prevent too much pressure on its legs. When the rhino is awakened by Will, most of the team has already moved out to a safe location. Remember, the black rhino can be aggressive, especially upon awakening. Another incredible sight to see was it waking up. Fortunately, this rhino decided not to take out its aggression on us and this was another successful procedure. Can't tell you enough that during our time here this week that working up close with the animals has been truly uh, an experience of a lifetime and I, I can't say enough how um, grateful we are for being able to enjoy this, uh, experience it, yeah. and to meet you at the same time. It's really, it's Yeah, wonderful. look, it's, it's very special for us to be able to share this. This is a global inheritance that we are trying to preserve and look after, not just for South Africans, but for the world. So, yeah, wonderful to have you with us. To sum it all up, Will has a great team, and he appreciates the function of ecotourism in supporting their efforts to restore this gorgeous landscape. In addition to thanking Dr. Folds, we want to express our gratitude to the staff and owners of Amakala, Kwandwe, and Karika Game Reserves for allowing us to be a part of their preservation and educational programs. We 100% recommend joining TWP for this unique experience in the Eastern Cape of South Africa. You cannot get an experience like this anywhere else, and you won't regret it or ever forget it just like us.